When building web APIs, there's a generic problem that everyone runs into specifically related to how you can do deployments of new API endpoints that already exist. This issue is how you can push new changes while making sure your old endpoints are still valid for users who are currently depending on them. And the way you fix this is through something called API versioning. Specifically, I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can start fairly easy all the way up to solving bigger and more challenging problems that you might run into when dealing with API versioning and fast API. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into some code. All right, so the very first thing we wanna do is let's look at our main.py file to kind of see where versioning would come into play to really help our application. So let's say we have like this mock database, right? We have our fast API application, which is gonna be called problematic API example because I'm showing you an issue. So we have our mock database, which just has two users inside, ID one, Alice, and ID two, Bob. We could be using a real database here. If you need to learn how to use like SQLite or Neon or any other kind of database, I have a ton of videos that you can go check it out. But right here, just to make it super easy and explicit, I wanted to show our database right here. So we're gonna be like, hey, yeah, we have a API endpoint that consumes nothing and it returns a ID and the name. So we're just gonna return the ID and the name, which is gonna be the entire record of our mock database. And then we can say, hey, we wanna pass in a user ID and then we're just gonna return that user ID and name based on the ID that's getting passed in. But what if all of a sudden we're like, hey, we're gonna update this database to now include emails because we're getting like a ton of feedback that we want our APIs to now have emails. People are saying, hey, we have to hit an external API to get their email, or can we just add it inside here? And then, you know, we go back to our team and we're like, yeah, that makes sense. We want email to now be in our database and returned when the user calls it. So what that could now look like is now our record will have ID of one, Alice with an email of alice at example.com, and then Bob at example.com. However, if we run this application, and we just do like a uvicorn main colon app. We open up our browser and we go to our API endpoint and we say, hey, try it out. We're only gonna get ID of one and name of Alice and Bob. So even though this email is in the database that we're going to be consuming, we're only getting ID and name. Well, that's what a lot of users are going to want if they haven't updated their product to now be able to consume an email. However, for the users that can, we are running into an issue and the issue is versioning. So what we could do is like add something that's called like V1 right here, which is now telling users, hey, you need to update your endpoints now use V1 while we create a new endpoint of V2 that is gonna be the exact same thing so it's gonna look something like this, but instead it's gonna be V2 and it's going to also return the email. So we could say something like this, where it's gonna be email is going to be the user email. Add a slash right here, once I add a slash. So let's now go back here, refresh, and now we're gonna have a V1 where if we execute, we get ID of one and name of Alice. And if we do this here, we're gonna get all of them. And now we just need to communicate to the user saying, hey, make sure you're using V1 and V2. Now, this is the root of the problem. This is what's so hard about scaling APIs to use multiple versioning. Now, there is some ways that we can do this to make our application just easier to maintain and easier to scale as we are implementing versioning in our application so it doesn't break our users who are using our fast API application. Now let's go ahead and look at our three different projects. Now each project is going to scale with scalability and maintaining. It's going to allow us to be able to do it like pretty simple and quick, a little better for scalability. The best way that's for scalability, but it could be like slightly an overkill in certain standpoints. So if we look at Proj1 and we open up our main.py file, we can see that we're gonna have a versioned API example where we're creating routers now. Now these routers are going to have the prefix already attached and we're going to separate it in users v1 and users v2. 
We're going to have the same exact database, and then we're just going to have a empty endpoint that just kind of tells us about where our versions la live. So if a user is like, hey, I want to upgrade to V2, or I want to use V3 or V4, we're going to have an area that tells the user where those live. So here we can see that in the same main.py file, we have it split between V1 and V2, completely just handled by our router. Because our routers, you can create more than one routers for a single page, and we just have it prefixed separately. So right here, we have our V1, which returns just the ID in the name, same thing for that ID. And then we have V2, which just returns the entire database or returns the ID and the name. So if we go ahead and we just like CD into Praj1, and then we run our command. If we go ahead and we look at our apps now, we can see that it's separated to V1 and V2. If we call v1 our api slash v1 users we get the original and if we call v2 we get the new one and it's all sitting inside the exact same main.py file now this is a good thing to do if you're trying to be quick you need to hurry up and make something fast you need to deliver it fast the business needs it right now we broke a bunch of users and we want to get it in there this is a quick and I don't even want to say dirty. It's just a quick way to implement versioning using routers in the same file. Now we're going to go into project two. Now project two is structured more like an appropriate application where we have our main.py file, which we're setting up the routers for. And then inside our users feature, we have controllers, our models and our services. So if we look at here, we can see that we are setting up our V1 routes and our V2 routes inside our main.py file. If we look at our controllers, we can see that we're just setting up completely normal here. We have our routers where we're going to say API V1, and then we're going to have our V2 folder directory where it's going to say V2. Now, these are now essentially calling the exact same service file, but we're naming the service functions V1 and V2. So if we look in our service now, we're going to have a v1 functions followed by a v2 function which essentially do the same thing but just with the extra features so we're going to have our mock database and then our v2 service is going to now return that and then we're going to do the same thing for our services so our service file is now going to have our combined features but our controllers are completely separate and we're also going to be using the essentially the same model so we're going to have v1 model and v2 v2 is going to inherit v1 which is now going to have our email so it's actually pretty scalable. We have completely separate folders for our controllers, which is where most of the finding happens, right? Because we can say, hey, in V1, this issue is occurring. We can easily identify V1 and track it through the services all the way to when the feature is actually happening. And we can see that it's going to be returning our user one response model, while here it's going to be returning our user two response model. Now, structuring it in this way, where you have a controller package separated by V1 and V2, which all kind of go to the same service based on different functions, this is getting um, significantly more scalable in the idea of what we can deliver to users. Now, the only issue here is where confusion could last is if some endpoints still live on like V1, while other ones live on V2, while other ones live on V3, you kind of want to keep them intact and um, proper throughout the entire application. So if you're on V3, just move those features over to V3 so you can identify, hey, V3 means version three of like the entire application, maybe not just that endpoint. It helps drastically when trying to look at this and scale how you can use versioning. Now, the last one, which is Proj3, this is where it's gonna be the most scalable solution we have, where we are going to be doing the exact same thing with our main.py file but our controllers are gonna be separated just like Proj2 into V1 and V2. Our services are now gonna be separated into V1 and V2. So they're actually gonna be calling completely different services where this is completely just V1 and our services over here are completely V2 only and our models now just have them all connected. Now, this is really good if you're going to be scaling your application in a way where the services versions mean something. 
This probably allows for the most scalability, but it could cause issues because you could have like V1, V2, and V3 controllers all needing to call the same exact service. And now you need to place a file in one of those service structures. You could have like a utility service, but now things starting to get a little bit tricky. So if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with Proj2, where you just separate the controller endpoints, and then you can kind of separate the services when needed. But this, these are like probably the most popular ways to do versioning in a fast API application, you, you separate them by different routers, and then you go from there into like a controller package with different versionings and things like that. So I hope you're able to learn something in, in this video. Versioning is really, really important for uh, scalable backend um, applications. So hope you learned, and I will see you in the next video.